talk a little bit about Mrs. Bimla Misra, in whose memory this fellowship has been instituted. She was my mother who, was, who always stood up for human values. She was an educationist and taught her pupils not only English language, but also how to persevere in the face of adversity, how to find joy in sorrow, and how to live life to its fullest despite all odds. As in life, she also rose above the traditional customs and rituals to support the cause of education even in her death. She donated her body to King George's Medical University of her city for students to experiment upon it even when she was there no more. The Bimla Mishra Memorial Health Fellowship Program is based on the vision of CNS, which is a just social order by achieving development justice for all. We at CNS believe that experiential and lived knowledge of key affected populations should be central to driving responses to specific health and development issues. Recognizing community voices and responses as an expertise along with those of other experts such as doctors, scientists, policy makers, etc., is one of the key principles of health and development journalism at CNS. The BMM Health Fellowship Program was born out of this firm conviction to increase evidence based health reporting from the front lines, document voices of affected communities dealing with specific health issues, built upon the understanding and sensitivity of CNS health fellows on a range of health issues. Highlight community-centric health news coverage in local newspapers and other media channels and raise awareness and build public consciousness on health issues through sustained news coverage. I would like to begin by inviting one of our past fellows Alice Tembe from Swaziland to share her experience as a health fellow and she has extensively written for CNS over the years from Swaziland, UK and South Africa. I hope Alice is online and would like to share what it was like to be a health fellow. Welcome fellows. Um, my name is Alice Tembe. I'm from Swaziland. It has been quite a great honor to be a, correspond a, a fellow in, the, in, this, in this program. Thing I would just highlight the first two things that changed in my life is that I'm actually able to tell the world what I see, what, what frontline health workers see in the field and nobody gets to see. You, you have a flat platform to actually share your perception and to bring together the other experts, the patient on the street, on the, on the ground and share that with the world. The second thing is also recognition by other academias in my field. As a fellow, um, there is respect for a person who is a fellow than a person who's not because there's, there's, there's a respect in their, in their, in their opinion and what they share. Um, there's respect for what you present. Um, the third thing is that I've actually been asked in different conference uh, settings to wrap a tour and to, to, to document um, sessions and programs. And that is actually shared with the world. It has made me a significant person who gets to share um, important and effective information with the world, not just in my country, because this information gets to be published worldwide. And that, that has made, um, in terms of career development for me, a significant change in, 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 in how people respect my opinion when I speak, uh, how people want to listen when I speak, how I'm uh, in different places invited to speak and to document work that has been done. Um, I, I would say those are the first three things that immediately when I started noting or indicating with, in my field of work that I'm a fellow in the Citizen News Services Program, that the, the, the changes that immediately came uh, on board. Uh, long term, I, uh, the fellowship program got to introduce me to other health, public health specialists in other countries, in other f different environments and exposed me to how they work, the way that things happen there, and was they shared their own experiences as I read their own articles, 
in the same for forum. It actually helped me to inform my work in my own country and to benchmark the work that we do in our country against other countries that are facing similar challenges and issues. Um, that has really tremendously improved a uh, number of programs that I've been working on, particularly in terms of treatment and access and um, documentation of work that has been done and sharing across borders to ensure best practices are, are actually implemented in other places and adapted in other places. I would say in the long term that's one of the major things that has changed for me and I would I, I embrace it. Um, as I prepare for further academic development, I'm looking towards doing my uh, PhD in the coming year. This work that I've been doing has actually become quite a, a, an addition to, I think the quality of my work that I'm going to do is I study for my PhD in, 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 in lung health and, and um, infectious diseases. I, I think if you have a platform where it's more than just professional development, you also get personal development um, and you get respect in your among your colleagues. This forum can change your life tremendously if you decide to use it that way. And I do encourage anybody who's joined in this plat platform to maximize the benefits of the platform, not just for yourself, but for the work that you do and the causes that we, we are channeling. Um, in the NGO sector where I'm sure most of you are coming from, there is not much documentation of work that has been done and we keep repeating the same mistakes and people do not note the impact on the person that is supposed to be the beneficiary. You have a platform to start influencing at a higher level uh, policy change, programming change and even redirect funding in programming that is being done uh, towards lung health and infectious diseases. So seize this opportunity and maximize it. I think one of the major things you can do in, in utilizing the platform is engaging regularly with um, uh, the office. That, that helps you to improve the quality of your work, but more, more so also that helps you to even publish beyond just the work that is going to be shared, the, the forums that are the topics that are going to be shared. Bring up your own initiative and, and share it with the world. Um, it impacts more than you can imagine. Um, I think at this point, that's what I really wanted to share with the team. Uh, and wherever you are, you now have a family in public health. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Me. Thank you. And I would just like to say that even as Alice says how much she had gained from this program, Alice needs brownie points for always being a very dedicated writer and even now she keeps on writing for CNS because once a fam family member of CNS, always a family member of CNS. And she continues writing even now. And I think that is a bond which is formed forever. And that is what we hope will happen with our next uh, fellows of 2017-2018. Thank you, Ellis, for your kind words. Ellis has already broken the ice. Now it is the right time to request each one of you to please introduce yourself very briefly. Let us get to know each other. So I would like you to give your name so that we know how to pronounce it, profession, place of work, and your thought in not more than eight to 10 words on the world you want. So let me set the ball rolling. I'm Shobha Shukla, based in Lucknow, India, and I'm managing editor of CNS. I want a world where there is gender equity and social justice. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Rahul. I work with Citizen News Service as a citizen correspondent and based in Lucknow. I want to see a world uh, which is free from tobacco menace. Hi, good, good afternoon everybody. I am Raja Aswal. I'm a public health specialist working on family planning in six states in India. I was born in Assam. Uh, and I would like to see a world where health is accessible to all and where governments focus more on preventive programs and policies rather than curative care. Very well said, up. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. I am Brahaspat Khan, Pandey from Rambas, Uttar Pradesh. I am currently uh, uh, written in the Delhi Press, uh, uh, Saras Salil Shobha, another magazine, uh, especially issue health. I want to be whole world to be free from TB. 
which will be reduce the number of TB deaths. Thank you. My name is Dr. Nachiket Sule. I'm a public health specialist uh, based out of Pune, Maharashtra. My areas of interest are mental health and uh, the other thing that I'm currently working on is malnutrition. So I want to work on integrating nutritional services wherein uh, there will be no more malnutrition in the country. That's what I want to work on. But that's a very long goal to achieve. But that is uh, something that I dream of in the future. And the second interest is mental health. So I've been working quite a lot on mental health and I focus on uh, depression and uh, severe mental disorders in the rural communities. So basically there is a, a tremendous gap in the service availability in the rural areas. So I've been focusing on how to uh, reduce that gap in the treatment aspects for mental health disorders. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Sharma from Andhra Pradesh. Yeah. Working in the medical college at Tamalapuram, Kemch Medical College. I am in the department of pulmonology. I am working for the cause of tuberculosis in last 10 years. Earlier as a consultant in the GFATM program. And now I want a world TB free. Thank you, doctor. And I would just like to tell our participants that uh, Dr. Sarma is also organizing, one of the main organizers behind the next national conference on tuberculosis which will be held this year and the CNS will be very much part of that, will provide all support because that is a cause which is dear to our heart also to eradicate tuberculosis. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Sarma. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Welcome. My name is Esther Isain. I'm a communication specialist with the U.S. Department of Defense Water Aid Program, Nigeria. And I'm happy to be with you and amongst you. And I'd like to connect to a forum where through our platform we can advocate for a better and healthier world. Thank you. I'm I want a world that is free. That was Vishpati Parma from Uttar Pradesh, India, and he wants a world free from tobacco. And he wants tobacco production and sale to be stopped so that we can have a world where there, nobody dies unnecessarily due to diseases arising out of tobacco consumption. Hello everybody. I'm Dr. Manoj. Uh, uh, I've done my education uh, in uh, medicine and public health and I had completed my master's in population sciences and finance. Last 18 years I'm working in the area of health uh, uh, in uh, local self-government uh, as well as state government and central government and was closely working with World Health Organization uh, Network in India uh, and other international organization like Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics Find. Right now I'm working as a freelance consultant uh, operating in India, Nepal and Maldives uh, specifically for tuberculosis, finances, uh, public private partnerships and I want a world where everybody is having access to uh, information and services for every small or big health issue and uh, which is properly funded. Hello, hi, it's really nice to meet everyone virtually. Uh, I wish we could meet uh, in person, although it's a dream. My name is Sophia. I am a public health consultant from Bangalore, India. Uh, I'm a dentist by training uh, and I'm fairly new to public health. Uh, in public health, I've uh, developed interests in urban health and uh, non-communicable diseases. And in future, I uh, see myself pursuing a PhD uh, in urban health or non-communicable diseases with uh, uh, gender lens um, and especially women and children issues. And um, how do I want to see a world? Well, uh, since I'm a young professional, uh, I want to see a world where all the young professionals come together and, uh, uh, and probably that would be an equitable world if you strive for it. And I think that's the world I want to see. And it's great to meet all of you. And then to what you said that maybe we meet in person today. This is what we all want and hopefully we will. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I think uh, during the course of the year probably, yeah.
move on to what i would call tips for developing your article story angles article construction and getting heard on issues that matter most to your world some basic tips when we are framing a story you are the best judge of what should be the best flow to tell the story impactfully but we have to cre- please remember one thing that should neither be an opinionated blog post or a transcription of the webinar recording it just cannot be that it it has to be based on the theme of the webinar and what you hear in the webinar and what your questions are around that so the first important step is your active participation in the webinar that is the first step to developing your article to so get the opportunity of asking relevant questions from the webinar panel of experts you send us your questions in advance even during the webinar before the question and answer hour begins we will try to prioritize your questions over those of other webinar participants because we have seen very often we are flooded with so many questions that it is just impossible to take up all of them within that stipulated time period and then there can be several possible story angles for your article based on the theme of a specific webinar relevant to your country or local context choose one story line we can help you with this if need be but all of you are such seasoned people in your field i'm sure that will not be a problem but we are there to help because once you have participated in the webinar and or received its video recording and podcast you can choose a story line then again it depends also maybe as soon as the theme of the webinar is announced you can already choose your story line supposing the webinar is around say tobacco and its misuses now you can talk of uh tobacco and industry interference your story line could be these are just a few examples uh to box tobacco and the health aspects or how is tobacco impacting ncds and uh, uh they are actually helping in spreading in the non communicable diseases rather than controlling them and so on and so forth or what is the impact of tobacco on child health how does it impact environment and other development issues this is the case with all all themes of the webinar which are health related so you can either choose your story line just by getting to know the theme of the webinar and then you can frame your questions from the webinar based on your story line or some of us find it more convenient to listen to the webinar and then decide upon a story line that okay we are going to concentrate on this particular aspect that is entirely up to you i am just repeating once again it is the story is not about translation or transcribing of what was said in the webinar because that is just the webinar is there to help you connect with the experts in the field that is just one part of the work done next is that you develop your article the article should be around approximately 700 to 1000 words and it should include a lot more comments of the experts of the webinar that are relevant for your story it should also include inputs from interviews you conduct at your level with members of affected communities and local regional national experts at your end preferably please have some input from the community from a person who is affected by that problem and your local expert the article can also include relevant data from dependable sources like who or government websites un agencies websites etc and of course should be the first one a catchy title you have to put that a spark that interest in the reader to be able to read the article some do's and don'ts which we follow at cns to give web links the of any study or article which you are quoting in your article and these should be from reliable sources it's just not enough to say 85% people are this or 50% is that. we need to quote the source either that has been said by the expert in the webinar or it is from some other reliable source please do give the link of that source to give correct name and designation of the experts quoted in your article whether they were webinar panelists or otherwise you 
interviewed them in your context. Do send photos to go with your article, most welcome. But please mention the source of it to ensure that there are no copyright issues. You have clicked them, please write that and so the credit will be given to you. Please do not write incorrect spellings, grammar as far as possible. But the editorial team is here to correct that, but as far as possible avoid it. Do not leave the actual names of the community members while quoting him or her in your article to protect their confidentiality. Also at CNS, we refrain from using terms which we think are inappropriate like addict defaulter. Instead of defaulter, we can say somebody who's not completed the treatment. Do not even use the word diabetic. We'd rather say person living with diabetes. These are just some of the examples I'm giving. Instead of TB suspect, you can say a presumptive TB patient or presumptive TB case. Even that word trial, we always use the word so commonly, clinical trial. The word trial brings to my mind a courtroom where some culprit or convict is being tried. Best to say study. These are some of the points which I would like you all to keep in mind. You can raise your virtual hand on the screen or type your question or use the chat function on your screen if you have to ask. Sophia wanted to say something, I think. Yeah, hi. Uh, so the uh, storyline would uh, then be uh, around uh, personal experiences. Uh, would that be a driving factor to write an article or... Uh, can it be just uh, generally doing uh, sort of a literature search and matching it with the webinar? How would we develop a storyline then? I mean, just a question. Yes, okay. Now, would Rahul or Bobby like to chip in there uh, to help Sophie, uh, Sophia develop the storyline? She has asked a question. What could it be? Yes, hi. This is uh, Bobby. Ken well, well, it's a very important question and I think uh, there is no one right answer. This is, this is uh, so basically, you know, it is uh, always helpful uh, to know the focus of the webinar, the panelists who are okay. going to be there on the panel and in context of like you come from India. So for example, um, there are some suggestions which we can offer. For example, the Indian government has, uh, as well as other governments, the world have committed mm -hmm. to reduce NCD premature deaths by 33%, one third by 2030. At the mm -hmm. last uh, World Health Assembly held in May 2017, governments, including Indian government, uh, committed mm -hmm. to reduce NCD premature deaths by 25% by 2025. The national, strict, national health policy of uh, India, which was launched um, three months ago, I think, uh, it commits, mm -hmm. also commits uh, to reduce premature deaths by NCDs by 2025. But if you look at the data of what, what about the deaths of asthma, for example? Mm -hmm. So asthma deaths are slated to increase by 20% by, uh, by 20 in next 10 years if urgent action on climate change is not taken. So, uh, so asthma uh, data shows that, you know, the deaths will increase if climate change of climate, of climate mm -hmm. uh, work does not happen. This is about a collaboration between how will health sector work closely with the environment sector or the you know the environment ministry, for instance, etc. This can be one of the angles. The other angle can be what about the cancer death? There are certain cancer deaths mm -hmm. which are which are rising, and there are certain mm -hmm. cancer deaths which are on decline, but the decline is not sharp enough. Or tuberculosis, mm -hmm. for example, because tuberculosis also gets influenced by NCDs like diabetes, for example, mm -hmm. or tobacco mm -hmm. use, for example, which is a risk factor for all major NCDs. So tobacco also influences uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, program mm -hmm. outcomes, as well as diabetes influences, influences tuberculosis mm -hmm. program uh, outcomes. So an Indian government is uh, is committed to ending tuberculosis by 2025. Let's hope it does. Mm -hmm. Even sooner is better. But yeah. how? Because TB rates are declining at 1.5 percent or so, mm -hmm. and uh, the rate, the which is very very low, in the WHO says that 2184 probably, you know, we will be able to end mm -hmm. TB if nothing, uh, if you yeah. know, if business as usual goes on. So that can be another angle. How NCDs, okay. how it is so important to make sh to accelerate or to generate much stronger action on NCDs. So that not only we meet NHP targets, SDG targets, but also help. Uh, government of India to, um, you know, end tuberculosis, which is part of one of the NHP commitments. There can be several angles and or you can also take patient centric very stories or um, another possible angle could be 
about uh, you know about tobacco their major risk factor although the recent data the global adult tobacco survey data which just came out about few weeks ago uh, the fact sheet is on the who uh, cro website we can share it later on also so it shows a decline in tobacco use in adult uh, adult population in india about 6% i think but is that enough what about you know if you look at other things for example cardiovascular diseases Deaths due to cardiovascular diseases are on a rise. Uh, like the patient, the number of patients uh, who turn up in cardiology mm-hmm. OPD are are have significantly increased. About for you know in um, in Lucknow in King George's Medical College, for example, there's just one incident. Or for example, the ITC ITC profits have increased in the last quarter. So on one hand, we have data coming in that tobacco use is on a decline, uh, but so we need more. We need to prove you are a uh, you know you are already. um into public health so if you look at the data closely there might be more trends which we are missing out mm-hmm. right now so uh, there is a was a very interesting article in washington post um i think about 2 weeks ago which actually they looked at the us decline in smoking rates and they found that smoking rates declined only in, in uh, you know uh, in rich richer populations in the us so basically smoking rates the poorer populations or marginalized communities mm-hmm. like you know uh, uh, um, so the, the smoking rates were very high and there was very little decline so uh, when we say for example in indian context that is a question i don't know the answer to this because i i have i don't have not been able to get the whole report whole data okay. uh, that we, when we say 6% decline in tobacco use across the country mm-hmm. in which population has it happened yeah, so mm-hmm. are the, uh, so if poor people are if the decline is not in poor people again it might be i'm not sure we haven't seen the data yet that closely so but if the for, for example in us the poor and the marginalized communities are at the are that the are facing the worst brunt of not only just diseases but also marginalization discrimination human right mm-hmm. abuses and stuff right yeah. so, so so they are the ones who are most in need we need to make sure that you know uh, the sdgs the sustainable development goals had the mantra of no one left behind so we have to make sure that no one is left behind you know when uh, when we talk of um, development programs so there can be several uh, i know i've spoken a lot but i think it will just i wanted to make sure that you know everyone gets the message across is no one line you whatever you yeah. feel that this is a real issue and th- that's one uh, one that's the way uh, to go forward and my personal uh, uh, mantra mm-hmm. which helps me a lot was uh, uh, is that you know i need to say the story in 20 words mm-hmm. so if i can tell you exactly in 20 words like what is the going to be the focus of my story and then the rest of the whole article goes in sub, in support making that strong point you know so uh, for example in us uh, uh, the tobacco decline is not in the poor but only in the rich this is a, this is the story and this is you know you can develop you can go on or for example if we do not do tobacco control well uh we mm-hmm. will india will fail on sustainable mm-hmm. development goals or nhp etc so in you it's always better to to clear the focus and once you are clear what you are going to write probably then it will be much easier for you to ask the right questions which will help you write that article in the mm-hmm. uh, in the webinar so in the, when the webinar with experts happen which is on next tuesday 27th mm-hmm. june mm-hmm. on yeah. lcd then you exactly know what kind of questions you want to know uh, mm-hmm. or what kind of slide is very important for you and you can note down that part okay from 24th to 27th minute of the recording or podcast has that mm-hmm. response and you just need to transcribe that part and mm-hmm. uh, you know, to help you further bolster the point which you are about to make mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah and you also talked about the desk research and yes of course that helps a lot Mm-hmm. So um so for example digging out the data in support of uh, your article in any WHO report government of india report the latest yeah. report other credible information or uh, other kind of uh, you know work which might happen cochrane is also a very good source cochrane yeah. cochrane yeah, library yeah. for systemic reviews yeah. uh yeah so i think that 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 that, that, is, that that kind of desk work and that kind of preparation might help Yeah. Thanks for raising that Sophia. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That was really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome. Abhi can you also respond to our Hindi writers and uh, how well we will be able to help them to develop their articles in Hindi? Absolutely. Uh, uh, I'm sorry uh, for those who who do not follow uh, Hindi but I will try to be very brief for those uh, correspondents and fellows who 
वॉन्ट रिस्पॉन्स इन हिंदी ये uh, मेरा सिर्फ ये कहना है कि कोई एक uh, तरीका नहीं है एक स्टोरी कहने का कोई uh, कोई आर्टिकल या लेख लिखने का क्योंकि ये, और ये इस पर निर्भर करता है कि हम हम हमें और हमारा विश्वास किस चीज में है और हमें हमारे लिए हमारे कॉन्टेक्स्ट में हमारे परिप्रेक्ष्य में हमारे जिले में हमारे प्रदेश देश के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में और और बाकी चीजें अगर जैसे जो घटनाएं जो घट रही फॉर एग्जाम्पल उदाहरण के तौर पर राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य नीति आई हुई है हमारे भारत में या जो सतत विकास लक्ष्य है उनके संदर्भ में हम हमारे हमें हमें किस एंगल से ये स्टोरी लिखनी चाहिए तो उदाहरण के तौर पर सत्ताईस जून को जो नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेस गैर संक्रामक रोग के ऊपर जो वेबिनार है उसमें विशेषज्ञ लोग रहेंगे तो इसमें आपको अनेक तरीके के गैर संक्रामक रोग हैं जो जो जिन पर अलग अलग तरीके से लिखा जा सकता है उदाहरण के तौर पे कैंसर अनेक प्रकार के कैंसर कुछ कैंसरों का दर कम हो रहा है कुछ कैंसरों का दर बढ़ रहा है भारत सरकार का वादा रहे कि हम कैंसर सारे कैंसर का दर एक तिहाई करेंगे 2030 तक और 25 प्रतिशत कम करेंगे 2025 तक और उसी तरह से कैंसर से होने वाली असामयिक मृत्यु को भी हम का दर भी हम कम करेंगे 25 प्रतिशत 2025 तक और 33 प्रतिशत 2030 तक ये भारत सरकार ने यूएन में भी वादा किया है राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य नीति जो मोदी सरकार ने अभी हाल ही में जारी करी है उसमें भी ये लक्ष्य है तो इसमें बहुत से बन सकते हैं तंबाकू और कैंसर का उदाहरण एक एक लिंक इसके ऊपर कोई फोकस कर सकता है हृदय रोग आप देखेंगे हृदय रोग सबसे बड़ा मौत का कारण लखनऊ में उत्तर प्रदेश में भारत में दुनिया के तमाम देशों में सबसे बड़ा मौत का कारण हृदय रोग है और पक्षघात जिसे कार्डियोवेस्कुलर डिजीजेस कहते हैं तो ये एक और मुझे हमेशा लगता है कार्डियोवेस्कुलर डिजीजेस हृदय रोग पक्षघात इसके ऊपर ज्यादा लिखने की जरूरत है ज्यादा क्योंकि बहुत कैंसर के ऊपर तो बहुत बात होती है लेकिन इसके ऊपर बात कम होती है एस्थमा है एस्थमा एक और उदाहरण है दमा बहुत जरूरी है कि दमा के ऊपर ज्यादा बातचीत अधिक हो क्योंकि इतने लोग दमा से जूझ रहे हैं लेकिन दवा दवाएं अक्सर नहीं मिलती निशुल्क नहीं मिलती उसी तरीके से दमा की कोई पक्की जांच नहीं है कोई पक्की लेबोरेटरी वाली जांच नहीं तो ये बहुत बड़ी बात है कि जब कैसे फिर और दूसरी तरफ अगर आप आंकड़े देखें तो दमा के दवाओं का ज्यादा उपयोग होता है जिन्हें जरूरत नहीं है वो भी दवा की दवा लिए जा रहे हैं ऐसे सिर्फ भारत में ही नहीं बल्कि इंग्लैंड में अमेरिका में कई जगह इस तरीके के रिपोर्टें आई तो अगर हम लोग ये पहले से चुन लेंगे कि हमें हमारे कॉन्टेक्स में हमारे संदर्भ में क्या एंगल हमें बनाना चाहिए हृदय रोग पे हम फोकस करने जा रहे हैं कैंसर पे फोकस करने जा रहे हैं राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य नीति को लेकर फोकस करने जा रहे हैं कि भारत सरकार ने अभी हाल ही में राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य नीति पारित करी राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य नीति के अनुसार 2025 तक 25 प्रतिशत गैर संक्रामक रोगों का दर कम होना है तो ये कैसे कम होना है क्योंकि दर तो बढ़ रहा है कई गैर संक्रामक रोग है जिनका दर बढ़ रहा है और जिनमें गिरावट आ रही है वो गिरावट बहुत कम आ रही है 2025 तक आप कैसे 25 प्रतिशत कम करेंगे तंबाकू को ले लीजिए तंबाकू सेवन से अधिकांश गैर संक्रामक रोगों का खतरा बढ़ जाता है तो अगर वो बढ़ तो ये आ, मेरा ये सारी बात कहने का संदर्भ सिर्फ इतना है कि अगर आप अपने लेख लिखने का फोकस क्लियर कर लेंगे तो आप उसी के हिसाब से आपको मालूम होगा कि जो 27 तारीख का जो वेबिनार साढ़े चार बजे इंडियन टाइम पे हो रहा है उसमें हम विशेषज्ञों से क्या सवाल पूछें और और सिर्फ वही भाग आपके लिए और हो सकता है विशेषज्ञों की कुछ स्लाइड्स आदि भी आपके लिए इम्पोर्टेंट हो सकती हैं ठीक थैंक यू बॉबी एनी मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एनी वन आई एम जस्ट रिपीटिंग यू कैन प्लीज यूज द चैट फंक्शन और रेज द वर्चुअल हैंड डॉक्टर नचिकेत सुले यू वांट टू आस्क समथिंग या आई ऑलरेडी पोस्टेड माय क्वेश्चन सो आई जस्ट वांटेड टू नो दैट इन केस वुड बी अ वास्ट टॉपिक सो इट विल इन्वॉल्व मल्टीपल मल्टीपल डिसऑर्डर्स दैट वुड बी देयर सो कैन आवर आर्टिकल जस्ट फोकस ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर इंसिडेंट इफ वी वांट बिकॉज़ व्हिच मे नॉट बी द फोकस ऑफ द वेबिनार व्हिच मे बी देयर यस ऑफ कोर्स you can focus and but and maybe better so that you can ask some question related to that ncit you want to focus on from the webinar experts okay you can you can ask at least one question related to that so you will get a quote from the expert okay. and as we said you could send a question earlier so there is a guarantee that your question will be put up to the experts yeah right 
Yeah. Uh, Nachiket uh, Sile, uh, just wanted to add what just Shobha just said that these webinars are online learning sessions. You know, we are trying to bring experts and connect them with you all. So the whole purpose is uh, we are not trying to be prescriptive. There's no point of being prescriptive. But like the idea is that you know you are connected. Maybe they have not covered that particular NCD, for example, psoriasis. Uh, you are welcome to go ahead and ask a, a question about something which has not been covered in the webinar. Sure, the experts are there, and if the response is not there, that's that's important because the the issue which you have raised and if it was not covered in the webinar so you are bringing value you are bringing added value you people all of you each one of you brings in a very unique context uh, not only from work wise but also from where you people come from and i think the, that is a uh, the, that is why these sessions are for shared learning and not from top down or you know so yeah please go ahead and you hope that uh, webinars work for you and if uh, or you make them work for you Ask questions. Ask questions on particularly or in issues which have not, which have been missed out or not covered in, the, in those webinars. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Aspati, you have to ask something. जी मैं जी. मैं पूछना चाह रहा था कि अभी जो इसमें क्या जो गर्भवती महिलाएं हैं इनकी चाइवी स्क्रीनिंग को लेकर के कुछ नहीं हो पा रहा है तो क्या ऐसे स्टोरी आइडियाज शामिल कर सकते हैं क्योंकि अभी मैं हाल ही में कई हॉस्पिटल्स का विजिट किया हूं और कई जगहों पर वीएचएनडी जो मनाई जाती है जहां पर एनएम टेस्ट करते हैं तो वहां पर भी नहीं हो पा रहा है और ये बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है जैसे सारी चीजें जरूरी हैं वैसे ही अगर घर में बच्चा पल रहा है तो उसको अगर वो मां संक्रमित हो तो बचाना भी जरूरी है तो इसको लेकर के क्या लिखा जा सकता है मैम आप लोग जरूर हमें बताए की कौन सा मुद्दा हेल्थ इशू या हेल्थ या डेवलपमेंट का कनेक्शन जैसे की अभी एस्थमा और क्लाइमेट चेंज की बात हुई ये ये कौन सा है इम्पोर्टेंट तो एच आई वी और गर्भवती महिलाओं में एच आई वी की जाँच बिल्कुल इम्पोर्टेंट मुद्दा है और सबसे बड़ी बात तो ये है की ये हमारे पड़ोसी राज्यों देशों ने गर्भवती महिलाओं से जो जिन नवजात शिशुओं को जो एच आई संक्रमित होता है वो वो खत्म कर दिया है जीरो जी जी एक भी नवजात शिशु को एच संक्रमित नहीं होना चाहिए पैदा क्योंकि दवाइयां उपलब्ध है दवाइयां फ्री उपलब्ध हैं ये तो कितने छोटे छोटे देशों ने ये उपलब्धि हासिल कर ली है कि एक भी नवजात शिशु उनके यहाँ एच पॉजिटिव पैदा नहीं होता और इसके तो ये तो बिल्कुल आपकी सही है नैको का भी ये कहना है कि वो गर्भवती महिलाओं में उसके जरिए जो बच्चों में एच पॉजिटिव संक्रमण फैलता है उसको उसको उसे समाप्त जीरो करना है और ये उस लक्ष्य में भी जाता है कि भारत सरकार का भी ये लक्ष्य है लेकिन हम ये जमीनी हालात ये है तो इसका एक आप बिल्कुल हम सब स्वतंत्र हैं इसमें लिखने के लिए लेकिन मेरा ये कहना है कि ये ज्यादा अच्छा रहेगा कि ये जैसे कि नैको के लोग जैसे कि एच आई एड्स विशेषज्ञ लोग इन सब के साथ हम एक वेबिनार भी कर सकते हैं इस मुद्दे के ऊपर और उस महीने हम लोग ये मुद्दा व्यापक रूप से लेते हैं इससे जुड़ी हुई सारी बातें लेते हैं ठीक है और आप ये सवाल और इस तरीके के सारे सवाल उठाएं अगर आपने स्टोरी पहले कर दी है इससे तो वो स्टोरी हम लोग सबके साथ बांटे ठीक है जिससे कि लोग सब सब और आपको अन्य देशों से भी पता चलेगा उदाहरण के तौर पे अगर हम लोग इस मुद्दे को फोकस करते हैं तो जिन देशों में जीरो हो गया है रेट वहां के लोगों को बुला कार्यक्रम सरकारी लोगों से पूछा जाए आपने कैसे किया है जीरो श्रीलंका में हो गया है श्रीलंका में जीरो है थाईलैंड में जीरो है ठीक है तो हमारे आसपास के देशों में जीरो हो गया है और हम लोग के यहाँ बताइए हजारों बच्चे चाहे भी पॉजिटिव पैदा हो जाते हैं ये बिल्कुल भी एक्सेप्टेबल नहीं है और प्रगति बिल्कुल होनी चाहिए ठीक है तो ये आ, और इस संदर्भ में वैसे भी वेबिनार के अलावा भी अगर आपको लगे कि आपको किसी से बात करनी है नैको में आदि में तो प्लीज आप ये जरूर बताएं मैं बचा रहा था जैसे मैंने सब अभी कई जगह पर विजिट किया था और जो स्क्रीनिंग की बात आ रही है अभी तो स्क्रीनिंग ही नहीं हो पा रही है तो टेस्ट की बात मैं चाह रहा था विलेज लेवल पर वहाँ एन के पास ज्यादातर गर्भवती महिलाएं एन के पास तक ही पहुंच पाती है तो नैको अगर इसको रिस्पॉन्स करता है कि वो किट जो है एक डब्ल्यू बी एफ पी किट जो आती है स्क्रीनिंग के लिए वो बहुत आसान सी होती है तो इसको लेकर के मैंने कई लोगों से बात किया सीएमओ से भी बात किया तो उन्होंने कहा अवेलेबल ही नहीं है तो मैं चाह रहा था कि स्टोरी इसको पहले में करता और जो आप बता रहे थे कि फिर एक्सपर्ट के साथ इसको साझा किया जाता तो ये ज्यादा सही रहता फिर हमको आगे फिर आगे के लिए कंटेंट फिर मिलता और फिर अपनी बात हम ग्लोबल लेवल पर इसको रख भी सकते थे इंडिया की बात बिल्कुल बिल्कुल हम लोग जरूर इसको वेबिनार में लेंगे है ना इसको विशेषज्ञों के साथ समय लेने के बाद 
और इसको हम आपसे अलग से भी बात कर लेंगे कैसे इसे प्लान करें वेबिनार को और हम लोग महीने में एक ही कर पाते हैं तो वो उसको लेंगे जरूर लेकिन इस मुद्दे को ठीक है पक्का और तब तक आप जरूर स्टोरी करिए और आपको पूरी ताकत इस मुद्दे को उठाने के लिए बृहस्पति आज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन बृहस्पति वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट इन हिज नेटिव प्लेस ही सींग दट यू नो द प्रिवेंशन प्रोग्राम फॉर प्रिवेंटिंग एच आई वी ट्रांसमिशन फ्रॉम पेरेंट्स टू टू चिल्ड्रेन Uh, is not working very well and uh, so he wanted to do a story on that and our response was that we should definitely we will definitely take this issue on one of the webinars there are several countries around uh, india who have eliminated parent to child transmission of hiv so there is an indian government wants to eliminate but you know we have, we haven't been able to and definitely it is a very sad matter that uh, that thousands of children are born with hiv from uh, you know uh, from parental route which is definitely not acceptable as the medicines are there medicines are ruled out free or free in the in the in in uh, the public health program uh, nevirapine th- based therapies and stuff so uh, so definitely it's an important issue and one of the webinars in the coming times will de- in soon will definitely focus on this issue bringing together experts but also those who have actually achieved elimination of uh, um Oh, you know, it's HIV transmission from parent to child. Thank you. Dr. Manoj wants to ask something. Sorry. Just a small oh, query. Something. Where will be these yes. stories will be published? Uh, it is just to understand the audience, uh, so that the stories can be framed around that. Okay. I think Bobby is the right person because we have a very varied audience for that. So, Bobby, would you please uh, answer? Yes. Yeah, uh, Dr. Manu Toshniwal, uh, thanks. That's an important question. We we publish it on CNS, and then CNS uh, is a health news wire service, so it syndicates content to online and print media. All CNS articles, English Hindi articles, all our videos, all our audio podcasts, everything is under Creative Commons license, which means anyone can publish it, uh, you know, for free. And uh, uh, because we the only driving aim for cns is to raise visibility of these issues so so uh, sometimes the print newspapers in some 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 states in india as well as in other countries in africa or other asian countries usually pick it up sometimes asian tribune picks it up manila times picks it up in other nations as well uh, so in hindi mostly the hindi uh, local hindi newspapers or state in different states uh pick it up or the hindi portals pick it up etc for podcast is a different uh, way of mechanism uh, audience of uh, like people downloaded using their mobiles etc uh for videos they pub- get published on youtube and the link and uh, and then links of all the articles in english hindi or uh, video podcast etc they get disseminated via social media cns has a uh, uh, quite a reasonably uh, you know robust mechanism on twitter on facebook on reddit on a range of other social media platforms so we try to do that as well if you want to get it published in your local media wherever you come from in india uh, you are welcome to so because it's, everything is under creative commons so you can approach your local uh, all of you can approach your local media or uh, you know and uh, inform them that they are welcome to use the content which you you people have uh, written or generated yeah sure so i just wanted to add and in that case when the same article gets published on the cns website Uh, we add that it was first published in that particular newspaper or in that particular magazine or periodical so the we point which shobha madam has just made is important because certain newspapers want uh, exclusive stories like they want to be the first one to publish that story so if that is the case they are welcome to do so and then we will we will hold it back and once they publish it we can uh, publish it so yeah inform us if we uh, if we need to hold it hold the story till your local media is going to use it yeah thanks a lot I think we'll call it a day now. This recent, this photograph which you see was recently taken. It was is just a one kilometer away from our office, and it is a grim reminder of the ground reality for most of the people of our country and other developing countries as well. Let all of us do our two bits to change this scenario. We cannot work in silos. Health justice cannot be achieved without. climate justice and gender justice with this thought in mind bye for now have a restful weekend and see all of you on the 27th webinar goodbye namaskar